welcome to Poland Daily Culture. I'm Polina Odostein. And I'm John Carter. And today we're here at the Linen Museum in Zharadov. Join us as we find out exactly why this was one of the premier factories during the industrial period. Welcome to Poland Daily Culture. Today we're in a fascinating place in a linen museum in Żyrardów and my guest will be the director of the museum, Mr. Jacek Czubak. Dzień dobry, witamy bardzo serdecznie. Dzień dobry pani, dzień dobry państwu. Let us begin with explaining what flax is, as not everybody may be aware. Czym on jest? Len jest bardzo naturalną tkaniną, jest nad, y, ekologiczny, jest, y, jest, jest zdrową, jest bardzo takim przewiewnym materiałem. Jeden minus tego materiału to jest to, że... Flax is a plant from which linen fabrics are made, for example jackets. Linen is a very natural and ecological fabric. However, one con of the material is that sometimes various types of admixtures are used to improve the material, which in turn would allow the common housewife to have as few problems with it as possible. In Zhirardów, linen production began around 190 years ago, when this land, similarly to the desert proceed the construction of Las Vegas was merely a swamp area. It was then that someone came up with the idea that there should be a factory here. Thanks to this factory, the city of Zhirardów was established. It was built around the factory in red brick, which is why the city is referred to as the red brick town. The name Zhirardów itself did not come from nowhere either. The name came from the French inventor, Philippe de Girard, born in Lormarin in Provence. He invented the device which created linen yarn. In honor of Philippe, the inhabitants of Girardouf named the city just that. The roots of the city are very close to those of France. To this day, this city is friendly with the birthplace of the French inventor. And do dziś miasto Girardouf przyjaźni się właśnie z miastem narodzin Filipa de Girardouf w Marem w Prowansji. Czyli on Filip came to Poland from France, is that correct? Osiedlił się tu. W Polsce w Polsce Filip de Girard miał bardzo bardzo dużo Philippe de Girard experienced many adventures in Poland. He was the inventor of the lamp, xylophone and many other devices and instruments not necessarily related to the textile industry. He came to Girardów at the request of the owners at the time, Karol Hielo and Karol August Dietrich, and was appointed the technical director at the Girardów factory. Philippe de Girard was a great inventor, but unfortunately was never appreciated during his lifetime. It was only after his death that he was truly appreciated for being a genius inventor. Jak to z wynalazcami i sławnymi osobami, nigdy nie był doceniony. Natomiast no, mamy muzeum. We also have a museum of linen in Zhirardów. The first mentions of such a museum and a will to create one on the city's premise were around the 70s, following the collapse of the large linen plants, which was a process that lasted around 20 years. A private company was formed. This was the linen products factory. The company operated for around 15 years, after which its liquidation was announced. At that time, the local government of the city of Zhirardów, as well as the marshal of the Mazovian province, donated a subsidy which would allow for the creation of a museum of linen. It was because of this subsidy that the equipment inside the factory could be bought out. So the equipment surrounding us is from the factory? Yes, that is correct. Upon entering the museum, 80% of the devices are standing in the exact place they were in during the life of the functioning factory. There is also an exhibition called The Last Change in one of the exhibition halls in which you can see photographs from 2012 and 2013 showcasing the last employees to work in the factory. The Museum of Linen has its headquarters in one of the post-industrial buildings of Bielnik, which was once part of the production complex of the Gerardov factory. The monumental post-industrial spaces of the Linen Museum in Gerardov are closely related to the more than 180-year tradition of the linen industry. The building once housed a branch of the Gerardov printing house of the linen works, which by the end of 19th century had become the most powerful flax factory in Europe at that time. And the products were known and valued all over the world. 
The building of the museum's headquarters is a historic object, part of a 19th century factory settlement in Gerardov, recognized as a historical monument that is the highest form of monument protection in Poland. Regarding employees, this is where one of the first women's strikes were reportedly held. I found out about the history of the spool strike in about 2013, probably. Nobody talks about these events, unfortunately. I worked in a school myself, worked with young people, and considered myself very much oriented in the history of my city. However, I had never heard about this strike. When I learned about it myself, a decision was made alongside the Phoenix factory to organize a historical reenactment so that the young people, as well as the residents of the city, could learn about these heroic women. These ladies were the third on earth to rebel against in dissatisfaction and say no. But why did they do it? First First of all, in the beginning of the factory's operation, the employees could only afford to buy a mere loaf of bread for a week's salary. These were very difficult times. It was a 13-hour workday, with even children being admitted to work in the factory. These women were the first to say no. The strike broke out in the year 1883 and lasted several months. The strikers came out on top, the salaries were raised and the workday was shortened. The strike was indeed very fruitful. It was the first workers' strike in the Polish kingdom. There was a film based on these events, correct? That's right. There was a very positive social movement within the residents of the city. Around 250 people were heavily engaged in this project and the film was created. Over the course of three weekends, we managed to finish this production alongside Cossack horse riding and a Tsarist army. I heartily encourage you to watch this film, The Spool Strike, a true story. What's also interesting is that the longest tablecloth, which is mentioned the Guinness World Records, was created here. Yes, it's a record of the Guinness World Records, right? Yes, in 2009, the previous company in 2009, the previous company, the Linen Products Factory, created a project called the World's Longest Tablecloth. This was entered in the Guinness Book of Records. It measures 1150 meters. The citizens of the city of Zhradov stretch the tablecloth from the factory all the way through the Dietricha Street to the linen factory. The linen factory wanted to beat this world record, although it turned out that other countries had the same idea. To beat the record, one would need to weave a tablecloth that will be 2,250 meters, more than two kilometers. We are preparing very hard for this. Production will kick off this year, and the beating of the record will be next year, so I sincerely invite you and your viewers to the official attempt. Thank you very much for joining us here at Poland Daily Culture from the Linen Museum in Gerardov. I'm John Carter. And I'm Polina Otterstein and see you again tomorrow.